Welcome to our carol service for 2020 from St Nicholas Church, Great Bookham. Whenever you're watching and wherever you are, you are very welcome. We'll be hearing the Christmas story today told through carols and Bible readings. All our readers are members of St Nicholas Church and the music has been recorded for us by our choir and musicians. We'll begin with the story of Adam and Eve and how the relationship between God and humankind was broken. And then we hear how God planned to heal that relationship by sending a Messiah, a Saviour, his own Son. And we end by hearing how the birth of Jesus, his life, death and resurrection promises new life for all of us. I hope you'll join in by singing our congregational carols. All the words you need will be on the screen. Let's begin by offering this time to God in prayer. God of all hope and joy, as we hear the story of the coming of our Saviour, open our lips to sing your praises, open our ears to hear your word to us. Open our hearts to welcome your Son. Open our hands to reach out in love to those around us. May we be filled with your Holy Spirit as we come to worship you today, through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. The Fall from Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat from the trees in the garden, but God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. 
You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realised that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. After he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. The Coming Kingdom of Peace from Isaiah chapter 11 A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and of might, the Spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or 
decide what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion are the yearling together. And a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear and their young will lie down together and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den and the young child will put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The Annunciation to Mary from Luke chapter 1. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. 
How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she, who was said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. birth of Jesus from Luke chapter 2. In those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place whilst Quirinius was governor of Syria and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem the town of David because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. Whilst they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them.
The Visit of the Shepherds, from Luke chapter 2. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those of whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what had the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. The Word Made Flesh, from John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He only came as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world 
and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Stood in the petrol station, I couldn't help noticing the headlines on the nearby newspapers. It's official, said one, Christmas is saved. It was, of course, a reference to the good news that the government had just announced, that the period between the 23rd and the 27th of December would be a period when people would be freer to gather under current restrictions. But as I contemplated the headline, I couldn't help thinking to myself, this is all topsy-turvy. Surely it isn't we who save Christmas, but Christmas which saves us. Let me take you back to those readings we've just heard in this service. Genesis 3, which some of you may have thought was a bit of a downbeat reading, reminds us that because of humanity's decision to place their own wisdom above God's wisdom, all our relationships, not least of all our relationship with God, were fractured beyond our capacity to sort them out for ourselves. But by the time we get to our second reading, Isaiah chapter 9, there was already better news on the horizon. There would be one described here as a stump of Jesse, whose life and work would be the means by which broken relationships would be restored. Well, scroll forward with me, would you like something like seven to eight hundred years, and we find that that plan is actually coming to fulfilment. In our third reading, the angel Gabriel announces to Mary that she is to the, be the mother of the one promised by Isaiah, a son to whom she is to give the name Jesus. In our fourth reading, we heard of Jesus' birth, and our, in our fifth, the visit of the shepherds to the baby Jesus. Finally, in our sixth reading, from the beginning of John's Gospel, we hear how God's purposes find their fulfilment in the one who is described there as the Word, a clear reference to the person of Jesus Christ. So no, it is not we who saves Christmas, but Christmas which saves us. Literally, thank God for that. I'd like to conclude with a very brief film. It reminds us that in the chaos of this world, not least in the chaos brought about this year by COVID, there is a child who makes sense of that chaos. A child who came to rescue a world that was falling apart. A child to rescue each one of us. Christmas feels very different this year. Trying to be normal, knowing that we can't. Together, and yet, apart. Delivery for Shepherd. As we try to make the best of things. As we try to find some order in all the chaos. As nothing feels quite right. What we're all looking for this Christmas is a bit of hope. Hope for the future. 
Hope for our families and friends. Hope that everything is going to be okay. And that's exactly what Christmas is all about. Hey guys. The hope of a child coming into the world to make sense of all the chaos. To rescue a world that was falling apart. To rescue you. Look to Jesus this Christmas. He can change your life. Let us pray. Jesus, born in a stable far from home, we pray for our homes and families this Christmas. We thank you for the joy of time spent together, and we remember those who are separated from us by distance, those who are isolating, those who will be spending Christmas alone, and those who have no home or family. Jesus, our Saviour, hear our prayer. Jesus, for whom the angels sang, telling of peace on earth, we remember the troubled places of the world. We pray for victims of conflict, for refugees and the poor. And we pray for peace between nations and peace between people. Jesus, our Saviour, Hear our prayer. Jesus, who was worshipped by shepherds, rejoicing in news of great joy, we remember those for whom this Christmas will be difficult, those who are grieving, those who are unwell, and pray you will meet them in their need and bring them comfort and hope. Jesus, our Saviour, hear our prayer. Jesus, before whom the wise men knelt in awe and wonder, we pray for the leaders of our nation and of the world. 
Give them humility and wisdom. May they be guided by you. Jesus, our Saviour, hear our prayer. Jesus, who brought sight to the blind and health to the sick, we pray for our world in the midst of pandemic. We thank you for all those working to care for the sick and scientists working on vaccines. We pray for all those affected by COVID-19, those who have lost their jobs, those whose schooling has been interrupted, those who are lonely and fearful. Bring new life and health to our world as we pray for your kingdom to come. Jesus, our Saviour, hear our prayer. Jesus, our Saviour, you know us and love each one of us. You share our lives and hear our prayers. To you be praise and glory forever. Amen. As our Saviour Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining with us for our carol service today. I hope it has brought you joy and comfort this Christmas. And I'm sure you would want to join with me in saying a big thank you to our musicians for all their hard work, singing and recording, and to our technical team who make it all possible. And thank you to Alan and to all the readers. There's lots happening both in church and online in the days leading up to Christmas. Full details are on the church website. Remember to book your place if you want to be in church over Christmas. And do please share the news with your friends and neighbours about Share the Light, a chance to come and see the church decorated for Christmas and watch a film about the Christmas story, all organised to be as safe as possible. It just remains for me to wish you and your families a very happy, healthy and peaceful Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.